All right, so I'm gonna stop talking. I am gonna go, my baby's screaming. I'm gonna go run, get my baby quick. Um, I would love for somebody to share their thoughts or do you have any ideas? I wanted to say about, so like the habit stacking. Um, so some like, with like fly lady, she says, you know, when you're in the shower, then that's when you like wipe down the walls and clean the shower. You know, when you go into the bathroom, um, like at night, put your cleaner in the bathroom and then go in the bathroom. When you go in the morning, then you swish and swipe is what she calls it. But you can do the same thing with like, you know, while you're making your coffee, empty the dishwasher um, and uh, do things that like um, stack the habits. So one habit triggers the idea of another habit don't take it um, oh. um yeah that's i don't know that's all i say um james i think it's james clear he has the book about habits um yes honey she had to go get her baby <laughs> um Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but I think James Clear talked about that in his habits book about habit stacking and how you use one habit to trigger another habit. So I know when I'm making my coffee, I'm going to empty the dishwasher, you know, or mm. and when I empty the dishwasher, I'm going to do 10 squats or whatever. Anyway. Sorry, I missed a little bit of that. <laughs> okay, who else? I'm mute, I'm mute. I want to know, what did you say? <laughs> you don't have to say the whole thing. I heard a lot of it, but I would love to hear, hear a little bit of it again, please. Oh, I was just saying, you know, when you um, use one habit to trigger another habit. So like you were saying, you know, so like I'm going to empty the dishwasher while I'm making my coffee. And then while I'm emptying the dishwasher, I know I'm going to do 10 squats or whatever. So use one habit to trigger another habit. Yeah. And I love what you said too, about the shower, like setting the cleaner in the shower and like wiping it down. Didn't you say that in the beginning? Yeah. So, um, it's a, it's a fly lady thing. She says, put the toilet cleaner in the bath when, like when you're going to go to bed, put the toilet cleaner in the toilet. Then when you get up in the morning, you go in the bathroom and you swish and swipe your toilet, right? So you, and then when you're in the shower, you wipe down your shower. You just use a, you know, a rag and put your soap on it because soap is soap, you know, and you clean the shower. And then when you're brushing your teeth, you wipe down the counter. And so there, your bathroom is, you know, essentially clean. It's not like deep cleaned, but you, it looks presentable, right? You're not going to be embarrassed if somebody goes use your bathroom sort of thing, you know, and then- yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, how many times somebody comes to, you know, to your door randomly, and then you're like, sometimes I'm like shutting the door, like, oh, yeah, you know, like, I just want to invite them in. And son, um, I heard of my friend is like, Jen, no, you need to invite them in. So they know, like, this is real, you know, but at the same time, it's like, you don't want somebody using a dirty bathroom. So I think implementing these things, so it doesn't get to the point of, like you said, you're not deep cleaning it, but it's not to the point that it's unusable. Yeah. I have four boys and then my husband, you know, like every week I feel like the bathroom, like if I just kept up with it a little bit, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. And I think if we can alleviate some of those things throughout our day, then we have more time to do those things. And I think we have to think about, like, we don't want to then just fill that time that we now alleviated, fill it with other things, you know? For other people we need to take those times and you know think okay now what can i be doing to, for myself you know um and it's not selfish it's what we're supposed to be doing you know mm. hi alicia hello i saw you said ideas to habit zach oh yeah i was just asking if that was what we were supposed to think of yeah um so I think that there's like two parts of this, you know, it's like you're, you're stacking habit throughout the day. So you can create more time to 
have little bits and pieces mm -hmm. for yourself, you know? And so I don't know. Does anybody have any other ideas that they feel like, oh, this, I could utilize this time, or this is something, a habit that I want to pick up for myself? I'm 42 with a three-year-old. So nap time is my time. And it always has been. <laughs> so to me, it's like, yeah, it's essential whether I need to take a nap myself or if I want to do art or read or do studies like the Musar I'm starting. Um, it's my time. And I also wake up early. So I spend like when I had a newborn, I did not do this, you know, but he's three now and he doesn't wake up. So I wake up early to do my Bible reading and pray because I need that because I'm a weak vessel <laughs> at the start of my day. Um, so, um, I do have those habits, but I am not good at cleaning my house. And so this is good for me to think about ways to get that part of my life done because, <laughs> because I'll just kind of leave it a little bit. And it goes along with Mosar because this week was about, um, order. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. These two things are really going together and I'm going to be learning that. So I really um, appreciate today's gathering. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be different for everyone. You know, I think some people are going to have to focus more on the order, you know, the order of their house, the way they're doing things. Danielle says we rotate bathroom duty. Every other day, my girls and I rotate a bathroom. Yes, I have, we have they have three bathrooms to keep mm -hmm. it up and minimize, uh, minimize the yeah, the complaints like, but I didn't use this bathroom. Exactly. So you're, you're like eliminating that and you're doing it. So I think some people are going to have to work on those things where other people are going to have to work on like, what am I doing for myself? Because Even the days that I'm up all night with the, the kids, I will never rest at nap time. I will just keep going and cleaning. Not because I'm not because I'm a better cleaner than anybody else. It's because I find my identity often in a clean home, which is not, I shouldn't do, you know, that I know that that's one of the things that I'm working on is I can only do so much in one day. I can't completely neglect myself. My husband doesn't say anything to me when he comes home, but it's more of like, I need to do it to feel validated. And so for me, it's going to be thinking of, okay, how can I do some of these things throughout the day? And then when it's done, it's done. I can't do any more. I have to be able to read or do art or things like that, you know? So it's really hard for me to even think of those things. So I would love to know. I mean, you can put it in the chat or whatever. Are you more... Um, do you find yourself like needing to pray about ways that you can get the cleaning in throughout the day? Or are you, do you, okay, maybe. Um, or are you thinking more along the lines of, you know, what can I do for myself throughout the day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Millie said, I find myself a poor manager of time. I get wrapped up in doing a study and bam, time is gone. Mm -hmm. Good honesty. Mm -hmm. Hi, I've been muted because my son had at the library, they have a homeschool book club. So I was sitting in the library, so I couldn't jump in sooner. But I wanted to say, Alicia, I was in Musar yesterday also. And it's just amazing to me just how good the timing of this is and how this complemented so well, like all the areas that I'm struggling with right now. Um, we are new to homeschooling just since the beginning of this year and like, the, like 2023, not the school year. And so things were going really, really well. And we had a very good routine. And then my husband and I just took our first um, adult only getaway in 12 years. And I came back and I'm gonna use humor because it's my coping mechanism, but it was like, my kids are half feral now. I don't, and I just feel like Jen, for you to be like, you're in control of your home. Like I'm sitting there and I'm like, but I'm not. <laughs> And so I've been praying because I feel so outnumbered and I just feel like everything around me is chaos and like there's just all this chaos inside too. And so even just the quotes that you shared about like 
if we would do for ourselves what we do for our children or like taking the time to cultivate my own soul. Um, I just wanted to say, Jen, it was really inspiring because um, I just got on Facebook this morning and complained in a very passive aggressive way because my mother-in-law moved in with us a little over two years ago and she snores very loudly. And so we bought a house that had twice the square footage thinking like that would solve the problem and it doesn't. And there's nowhere I can go. To, so I haven't slept in two years <laughs> and I find that I just want, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to be very bluntly honest. I feel like my mind goes into murder mode. Like I hate everybody. Everybody's my enemy. Like some people get hangry. I, I don't get hangry. Like I can go without food, but I guess it's whatever that is, it's the equivalent to it. And it's because I'm starting my day with an empty cup. And I used to get up early and I used to spend time in the word and reading and praying and starting with like this grateful heart, right? Like even just the simple, thank you for another day. Thank you for time to communion with you. Like just those simple things. And it went so far. And now it's like, I don't do that because I'm so tired because I haven't slept, you know, but it's like, okay, well, either you can not sleep and you can be really, really grumpy <laughs> all day, or you can not sleep and you can still just get up and spend time with the Lord. And hopefully like that can sustain you. That can be your daily bread, you know, because either way you're going to be tired. So I don't know. It was just really inspiring and my biggest thing, I think, because I am new to homeschooling and I'm very, um, I don't know if, if anybody here is familiar with temperaments, but I'm very melancholy. And so the most important thing for me every day of my life, even if it's just for 10 minutes, I need complete silence without another human being. I mean, like not even breathing, like everything, my hearing is super sensitive, like to hear them breathe, to hear them walk, to hear them anything. Even if it's just 10 minutes a day, I need more than that. I need like 10 minutes, three times a day. But so this is helping me think like, okay, how am I going to steal 10 minutes a day? Which is hard because my children have such strong side, like sibling rivalry. Um, but I'm just going to have to figure that out. So anyway, I don't have any solutions. I don't have any ideas. I just wanted to thank you, all of you, and just let you know, like, this is definitely, I got on to look for Musar to find my homework and I couldn't find it on Kajabi. And then the text message came along about today. And I was like, at first I was frustrated because I'm like, I need to do this new start. I need discipline in my life. I need order in my life. But I am just really, really grateful for you. So, and all of you. So that's it. I'm sorry. I talked a lot. I love it. Thank you. I actually feel encouraged because I, every month, I never know what to talk about or how the father's going to use me. In the beginning, when I first started these calls, I'm like, I'm not even, I, I can't even believe that I'm doing them because I feel the same way as you sometimes. I'm sure we all do, you know? Um, especially, and I think as homeschool moms, we have more opportunity to fail. I don't want to say fail. We have more opportunity to grow, right? Um, if our kids were in school all day and we had the time to be quiet, we would never have to figure out how to live with them in harmony, you know? And I think when we hear all these things and we read these books, it's like, what am I doing wrong that I don't feel the shalom sometimes, you know? But remember, like, it, I, I have to remind myself all the time that it's a state, it's, it's not the that everything's always in harmony by the way it looks, but your soul is at harmony because of the way, you know, that because of the Lord, you know, and I think it's so hard sometimes and you're doing the best. I feel like we're just doing the best we can sometimes. And this is why this fellowship is so important. You know, this round table is really good because we realize that we're all in the same place, you know? Um, what are your, the ages of your children? Well, so the, my son who I'm homeschooling, he's nine. Right. And then my daughter is four, but we had already prepaid um, her preschool for the entire year. And honestly, she's a really strong-willed child. Like I, um, I've used loyalist coaching, which has made it bearable, <laughs> but like, that's where we, that's the progress we've made bearable. It's taken about a year to get bearable. And so she's not ready for kindergarten. So I'm debating, like, do I just, I might just put her through another year of preschool. 
because I don't, I don't know. Anyway, but then I have two stepchildren, which yes, right. that just makes everything, it's so hard because I can set up good habits with my two that are here all the time. And I'm not saying it's anything wrong, but they don't have those same habits or same consistency. And then one of them's a teenager and I'm a stepmom. And then just like, just like for the parents, like how you said, like, oh, you're closed, you're leaving your clothes around. Why are your kids doing this? And I have some of those habits too. But then even my older stepchildren who come over when they have those habits, you know, or my husband or my mother-in-law or, and it's like, everybody has to lead by example. So like, I'm really just trying to swim (laughs) against the current a lot, which is exhausting. (sighs) <sighs> especially navigating all the ages you know the different ages and the different needs of the children um and I think sometimes it's hard for us as moms to parent every child differently you know and so yeah. and you know you you want to think okay this is my one child I'm going to teach them discipline in this way and then you know you're thrown for a loop and your other child's you know a whole different way and it's exhausting to try to figure out sometimes you know um yeah. so I totally hear you on that I'm sorry that's it's, it's a lot you know <laughs> it's a lot. Um, and, you know, Kimberly made a really good point. She said, being a stay-at-home mom is enough in itself. We don't have to keep the perfect house or cook the perfect meals. Homemaking is a valid voc- yeah, vocation. And just like some people who work outside the home and don't get their daily tasks done, we don't always have to get our tasks done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is so good. Mm-hmm. Does anybody feel like it's a reflection on them if they don't get it done or are, have you come to the conclusion that you're okay? Like if you, I don't know the dynamics of your home, but I would love to hear, or, you know. Could I, could I say something? I don't know if I can add, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Hi. Okay. Um, first of all, I just went in, one of the comments that struck out, uh, that stuck out to me was she was talking about noise. And I don't know if (laughs) when I ran across this book about four years ago, and I know it's another book, but um, it's called The Highly Sensitive Person. There's another book called The Highly Sensitive Child or Parenting the Highly Sensitive Child. If you are a highly sensitive person, you, and it's not just, oh, I cry a lot. No, 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 no. It is um, it scientifically proves, proven. It's like around 20% of the population are highly sensitive. And what that means is that noise, light, movement, all kinds of different, it, any kind of, um, you know, um, ha- how, how you process information. If you're a highly sensitive person, you get all this, stimulus and information and if it's overwhelming and as an adult with children if their movement and noise and light and all of that become overwhelming you will be affected by it so you have to know that about yourself and um that's that's just one good thing to know about yourself. I highly recommend that. Um, they even have a, the lady no. that, yeah, that's the two, that's the two-year-old yeah. who's very noisy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, because I have that too. And it's just a good thing to know about yourself because to combat that, um, earplugs, yes, I have mine in too. Mine look exactly like that. <laughs> And um, so music, even just calming music throughout the day helps a lot. I'll find that I'm completely overwhelmed, overstimulated with just noise um, because I have a nine-year-old and a two-year-old and, um, and I'm 47 and oh my goodness, I would love quiet. So that was the first thing. So I highly recommend just... Um, knowing that about yourself so you can do small things to try and combat some of those very practical issues. The second thing was um, you talked about the Musar class yesterday and it, (laughs) 
that was incredibly revelatory to me. And it's just the first class. And I know that, and it was hilarious. But the thing, among other things, the thing that stuck out to me was, um, yes, it was on order. But I was really uh, convicted and realized that I have been too rigid. Apparently, I'm a I'm now a recovering Babylonian um, slave driver um, <laughs> that <laughs> that that has been too rigid, and I can see that. And so this morning, as that relates to homeschooling, um, mm -hmm. I reordered, I brought a different order into our curriculum. So it is going to become less about the curriculum and more about learning. And mm -hmm. in that way, I am hoping to um, teach him that if you are learning, you are having school. So I need to redefine, mm -hmm. uh, reorder, reorganize. And I allowed mm -hmm. him to reorder his own uh, schoolwork so that he is in charge. And the thought hit me when we were doing this. I said, you know, okay. I'm learning order. Now I've been hyper vigilant in what <clears throat> in what I thought was order and what I would call order, but that has been more of control. So that's not order, mm -hmm. that's control. That's the Babylonian slave driver. Um, mm -hmm. Because I came from such a chaotic uh, family, my background. So I was, the pendulum was swinging all the way in the other way. And neither one of those is good. So I really had the thought, I was like, wow. So just going back to the point that we learn these things so that we can teach them and so that they can use them as the practical tool that they are to better their own lives. I know he's nine, but these things, they, they stay with us forever if we actually learn them so the end there you go now we do two practical things and I have done this now my two-year-old he actually helps with unloading the dishwasher this is something that I do with the nine-year-old um, so it's become a game I'll turn on the timer on our oven say okay how okay how long do you think it's going to take last time it took us five minutes how long do you think it's going to take and we literally race together to put all the dishes away. And I mean, five minutes, my goodness, and it's done, and it's done. Um, so that's become a game, but even the two-year-olds, I will take the tray out of the drawer, set it on the floor, and then take all the clean, um, you know, take the little tray out of the dishwasher and put it next to the tray. And he actually sorts them um, into the right, places which you know I didn't actually think he would do that the right way I thought it would be a big jumbled mess but he did see the like things and he put them in the right way and I was like wow cool let me look for other stuff so that's mm. one game we play with the dishes another game that we play with um cleaning up is really my son likes music he actually really likes skillet so it's the louder the skillet the better and we crank that up and he cleans up. And when that's over, then it's over. <laughs> so that's cleanup time. It's super loud music. <laughs> okay, there you go. The end. My two cents. Maybe we can write on the, like when you're doing your two weeks of everything that you're doing, maybe we could also write like what's triggering us, you know, like when we're having those moments. I really like that because you're right like if we could alleviate some of that like that would be that would make our dates right there our days so much smoother you know i love the earplugs yes 
it's watermelon. Sit down on the bed. Yes. Um, for me, it's like the noise. Yes. And it's the, I just, I didn't even think other people struggled with that sometimes. I'm just like, how is it so triggering to me? And it's the mess for me too. Like the, the stuff around the house gets me. Um, so recently I just spent two months, my husband and I cleaning everything out and getting rid of stuff. Like I had this like weird attachment to stuff and I'm like, I'm a minimalist as it is. Yes. I'm a minimalist as it is, but I noticed like when things are all over the place in a mess, I was so triggered by it, you know, and then everyone's screaming and there's a lot of stuff all the way. And then I just lose it, you know? So I think writing those down and learning. So that's why now I'm encouraged, like, okay, before we leave the room, we have to pick it up because all of a sudden you blink and the entire house is a disaster and you just spent all, you know, cleaning it. So that's really good, Tara. It's so many great things. And I'm- Can I, can I say something about her. that too? Yes, please, 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 Cause please. Because I, I recognize something about myself. It's so funny because it's like, oh, wait, what? Oh, well, that's me. Okay. So one of the one of the things, and I mean I could tell you a story about it, but whatever. But one of the things I realized about me recently is so we're 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 different. We all know that we are different types of learners. So you're a, you know, we have we talk about that in terms of our children, like an auditory learner, a visual learner, or a kinetic or kinesthetic, whatever. Anyway, the doer. Okay, we'll call him the doer. That, that type of learner or that learning style. And I realized the mess, the mess and the look of the mess, it, it drives me like completely bonkers. And I realized I associated that, um, that, that I'm actually a visual learner. So what that means is that when my environment looks like it's in chaos, I can't think straight. Like, it's like, uh, uh, hold on, a bomb just went off in my house and I, I, need, I have to clean it before I do anything else, before I can actually think clearly. And so that's just one of those things that, yes, it's something to get over, but it's because if you are a visual learner, you want things in their place. And then it's like, oh, okay, now I can relax and start everything but if you know your children do not respect that at all because <laughs> they're children and they have to that's just another thing that they have to learn and they are probably a totally different kind of learning style so my son good example the nine-year-old he is a doer he's all over the place he wants to He'll play with one thing. He'll be doing a science experiment and cooking something all at the same time. He's just one of those. He's movement, movement. Don't even give him a chair to sit in because he's not going to sit in it. Um, he would like to do math on the trampoline. I know he would. Uh, he's just one of those. And th so that mm -hmm. gets his mind really engaged when it's coupled with movement. I am not that way. So that it's just the visual learner thing. That's all I wanted to say. That's good. Cause for me, and I've had to, I've had to explain this to my husband. Like, even if there's only a couple dishes in the sink, my dishwasher hasn't been fixed up in seven months, but that's a session of its own. Anyway, but even if there's only like two cups, a bowl and three spoons, I cannot start dinner while there's anything in the sink. And I've had to explain to him that, like the visual it it's like it's like screaming at me it's like uh it's like the equivalent of if somebody's screaming at me for me to look around and see a mess it, it's the, it does my brain feels the exact same way as if like I was getting yelled at it just feels so uncomfortable to me that I can't function I can't do anything else and then by the time I'm done cleaning it up I'm so exhausted that I'm like well I don't want to cook <laughs> because I don't want to have to see the mess again. So I understand what you're saying. You're not alone. I think we have really good things to, um, to think about this month. I would love to see, um, I feel like our, yeah, go ask Hudson. Ask Hudson, please. Okay, ask Hudson. Um, I think last month we had really good conversations and we didn't have time today to kind of touch on it, even though there's a lot of different people on here. I would love if we could 
make sure we're jotting those things down and come back next month um, and have time to revisit this. And I would love to hear what's working or what did you circle or what habits did you think of for yourself that you want to implement in a second. So yeah, so I would love make an effort to put it in your calendar. And maybe what we can do is after I do my presentation, I'll, I'll keep it short again and we can make sure we're round tabling together and coming back to these things. Um, because I do feel like this is, I'm glad that this is a subject that we want to talk about in the future. And we want to keep going. Cause if this is something, and you guys are the ones showing up on the call that, that this is what we need as mothers, then let's keep doing it, you know? And so I will, like I said, I'll be praying about what to share next week. And then we can, I would love to revisit this for a little bit. Um, and Loyla said she's going to join. And so if she's coming next week, maybe these are the things that we can write down and um, maybe she can even hop on here and share with you some things or um, I would love that. So and if there's anything special that you want to um, talk about next week or the week after, just jot it in the chat or just message me privately and we'll make sure that we touch upon it and we have time to do that. So, okay. I want to respect your time. I love you guys so much. I'm thankful. Thank you for being patient. I'm so sorry that my children are all over this computer right now. <laughs> Oh yeah, Millie. We actually, I was talking to Crystal. Crystal's going to come on and we, we're going to have some guest speakers come on and chat about older kids. So um, let's put that in the chat. If there's anything specific um, when I get, when I talk to the people that are going to come speak that I can make sure that it's addressed. So if any of you with older children have anything specific, just please reach out to me and let me know in the chat. Um, and yeah, so, okay. Thank you guys. I love you.